What is up you guys? My name is Mental Hog and welcome to our Leicester City career mode on FIFA 23. I've been gone for a while here with the videos. I'm sorry about that, but I am back. We're going to be bringing the daily videos back as you already know. And Leicester City is our next career mode, our next destination back to the Premier League. This series has a little bit of uh, like a special place in my heart. It's the first like series of YouTube videos I ever made on FIFA on this channel. So if you go all the way back in time, you will see my awkward, uncensored, like just different version of my video. So go check that out if you haven't. But we're going to come back to Leicester now and do things, you know, the right way, a little bit differently, a lot better quality and all of that sort of stuff. I hope you guys are excited for that. If you are and you are new around here, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the rest of these videos. And also, please feel free to drop a like on the video. It does help people see the videos as well. So I'm going to stop saying the word video now, but also in the comment section down below. Let me you know, share in the excitement. Tell me how you think about uh, Lester, Brendan Rogers, the team, all that stuff and who you want to see here, all those sorts of things. So, yeah, what we need to talk about, though, is this Lester team. Obviously, Leicester are famous for winning the Premier League back in the 2015-16 season when nobody really thought they would. A little bit of a Cinderella story with them. And ever since then, they're kind of chasing that high. When they're in Europe, they don't have the squad depth to really challenge in either competition. They fall off a little bit. When they're not in Europe, they uh, bottle top four, you know, on the last day and then end up in Europa League and then get grouped. You know, it's just like an endless, vicious cycle for them. And right now they are in between owners, I think, and they are renovating their stadium. So a lot of financial issues have plagued the team and you can see it in the quality in their starting lineup. They sold Casper Schmeichel, no replacement for him. They sold Ben Chilwell, no real replacement for him. Jamie Vardy is 35 years old and they still don't really have their long-term successor at the club. It could be Ichi Nacho, it could be Pat Sendaka. James Madison is forced to play out on the right wing because they just don't really have anybody that can be playing there. Their defense is a bit of a shambles. It's just, there's so many places for reinvestment and just trying to improve the squad in this team. And that's kind of what we're gonna to wanna to do. Eight, you know, get the old players replaced, not necessarily kicked out of the squad. The player like Johnny Evans can be around. Jamie Vardy can obviously give us a pretty good first season, stuff like that. But we need to think about long-term replacements. And that's exactly the kind of goals that we're gonna have on this team here right now. The first thing I wanna do though, is I wanna change up this formation because I, this is not how I wanna play this team. So this is a little bit more like the formation I'm trying to play, a 4-2-3-1, obviously somebody pacey and can get in behind up top. James Madison is a great player at that number 10 role, which is how I wanna utilize him. Harvey Barnes is great as like a left midfielder slash left winger. This double pivot of Telemans and Ndidi has been fantastic. This whole midfield of Leicester is kind of their strong point their strongest point to build off of. But the issue is that like top clubs are going to be coming in for these sorts of players. And the challenge I'll set for myself is like, if we can't attain European football and uh, by European football, I mean like maybe minimum Europa League. I'm not thinking about the Euro UEFA Conference League at all. So Europa League or bust. If we don't get the Europa League, one of these players has got to go. I will sell them the first offer I get, that sort of thing. So yeah, the pressure is going to be on in this series, guys. We're not just going to take the team we have and keep them forever. They don't perform if we don't perform as a team these players don't stay around we're going to sell at least one of these players every season but you can see a glaring weakness right now that goalkeeper spot we just can't be a premier league european challenger with danny ward in between the sticks and it's not like he can get much better either he's 29 years old we need a world-class goalkeeper in there somebody on level with casper schmeichel who can carry this team to the next level also this right wing spot has been a thorn in leicester's side for a few years now, Iose Perez, since he came in from Newcastle, he's just not it. They brought in uh, Adamola Lookman on loan last season, but it was just that, alone. Mark Albrighton's not getting any younger, and James Madison has been playing out there this season. And, of course, he's a great player, so he will do well anywhere on the pitch, but you want to play to the team's strengths, and his strength is definitely more central. He doesn't have that pace. So, the two spots I'm most concerned with getting replacements for, right winger and goalkeeper. And in today's episode, we will be at least solving this goalkeeper issue. In terms of a budget, by the way, to work with four signings this season, we've got a pretty healthy 84 million that we could spend. Now, obviously, Leicester don't really have a budget anywhere like this in real life, so I'm going to try not to spend all of this necessarily if I don't need to. But I do need to use some of this money to bring in those uh, those players in those positions that we need. We need some reinforcements at center back probably as well. We could maybe do with a better fullbacks if we could afford it. But uh, yeah, my main priority, like I said before, a goalkeeper, a right winger. Those are the things we need. So in the comments down below, give me right winger suggestions because I'm still really not 100% sure who I want there. I will make a short list later of certain players I'm thinking about. I'll leave it up to you guys to uh, in the comments. Let me know what you think. 
And another thing that I like to do in all of my series, but in this one in particular, I do actually really want to incorporate the Youth Academy a little bit more, particularly using our homegrown talent. With a team like Leicester, it's very realistic because we don't necessarily have the money to buy the best bench, so we can use young players. For example, Finley Marks, our homegrown talent, 72 rated, great stats for the right wing. He's very, very fast, got high skills. He's 6'2", so he's a bit taller, but honestly, the meta is kind of shifting that way towards like kind of taller inside forward type of players. Somebody kind of similar to, you know, like a Cody Gakpo is what he could be for us. The English Gakpo, Finley Marks, is somebody we definitely could use. And then we've got a couple other players. I'm definitely sending the youth scout away to do some more of this type of stuff and bring in some players to reinforce our bench and stuff like that. We've actually got a really good scout here already, so I'm going to send him to England for six months. Bring me whoever you want. And if this goes well, if I get a couple of good players, maybe we can use some money from player sales or something like that to bring in another scout or two to keep it going. I think this will definitely be a series that we could be doing for two or three seasons. So yeah, let me know what countries you'd like to see me bring in players from. I don't know exactly Leicester's like connections too much country-wise outside of England, of course. So let me know what you guys are interested in seeing here in these two spots. Wow, so an offer like this to start off the simulating is definitely very interesting. Manchester City looking to strengthen at fullback in real life, of course. And, you know, on one hand, I want to keep this pretty realistic. Leicester are just kind of selling players left and right with no sign of replacing them. Ricardo Pereira, very injury prone, but he really is a great fullback. I would personally like to use him at least for the first little bit here. We'll see how it goes. If he sustains some sort of injury or if we're really not performing in January, I'll definitely offload him. But I think this is too soon to kind of make a decision like this on Ricardo Pereira. I'm going to keep him around for now. But if Man City are still interested, come like maybe January or next season, if we can't get Europe, would be down to sell a player like himself. He's a little bit older too, but he's one of our highest rated players. So we're going to keep him for now. The player that I am willing to let go, however, is Nampali's Mendy. He played very well for Senegal in the World Cup. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed him. And he does play decently well for Leicester in real life, but he's 30 years old. I don't really see a place for him in the squad. Indeed, he's got the CDM role on lock. And Bubakari Samari is way younger and already better than Nampalis Mendy overall-wise, stat-wise, all of that. So don't know how we're going to get him game time at a club like this. Wolves might be able to make use of him. We're going to let him go. And I won't even negotiate for more money. It's just over his value. 3.6 million. You're welcome to leave Nampalis Mendy. Thanks for your service. Now an offer like this, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. If by the end of this season, we cannot get Europe, Ndidi to enter, very realistically going to be happening. You know what I mean? I will offload these players to any club. Wilfred Ndidi deserves to be playing at a top club as well. So if Leicester can't be that club for him next season, he'll be out. That's the kind of thing we'll do. And I, I, maybe it won't even just be one player that leaves. We'll have to decide that further down the road. But for right now, Wilfred Ndidi will be sticking around. He is one of the best CDMs in FIFA, probably, and I really want to use him. Ryan Bertrand, another one of those panic buys from Southampton. He's probably going off the turkey to play for Fenerbahce. There's just so many players like this that Leicester seemed to have brought in almost out of panic and like didn't have any other options. So we need to kind of refresh the squad. And in terms of selling our best players, like why I didn't sell Ndidi, we've been torn apart enough by other clubs in Europe. I think we need to rebuild this club from where we are now as opposed to continuing to tear them down and go from there. We don't need to make the new ground here. We're at the ground and we need to build up from there. Another big transfer thing that I might be doing here is Kalechi Ihianacho. I'm going to go ahead and transfer this guy because honestly, he's not getting the game time he needs at Leicester in real life. He's not necessarily the future of this striker role either. He broke out through at Manchester City and had a lot of potential some years ago. He has not realized it and Olympique Marseille is probably a decent place for him to go play some football and get some game time. They need a replacement for Arek Milik and we need Patsandaka to really get a season to kind of build up into that striker role. So yeah, Ihianacho to Marseille, very realistically, could be happening now. I'm gonna try and get maybe a little bit more money. You'll probably see him gone. 16.5 mil, seals the deal. Ihianacho possibly going to Marseille now. And we're gonna see another long-standing servant. This is one of the few players left from when Leicester actually won the Premier League a few years ago, Mark Albright, and he's 32 years old. There's not really a place in the squad for him in real life or now. So Porto have come in. That sounds like a nice little retirement league for you to go to. So off to Porto with Mark Albrighton. Thank you for your service though, bud. Now this is an offer that is going to be shaking things up. Danny Ward, Salernitana want to come in and buy him. I see, I could see that being a team that really could use him actually. 75 overall at Serie A or Serie B could be not too bad. So I'm definitely going to let him go for this 5 million. But should he go, we really do need to buy ourselves a goalkeeper. I already said earlier we're going to solve that problem and we will talk about that at some point in this episode, regardless of whether this sale goes through, but this would definitely help 
Something else I'm noticing about Johnny Evans is that he's overall has already dropped. It has been one month. He's at a 78. I already have players that are at 78 that can play over him. We've got Wolf Feist. We've got, I hope I'm saying that right, by the way. And we've got Kaglar Soyunju. Again, another name I hope I'm saying correctly. Please correct me in the comments if you know, but you know how to pronounce that. But Johnny Evans is getting offers from teams like Man City. Apparently interested him in him. Leon wanted to sign him earlier. I didn't like that idea, but Lazio probably maybe wouldn't be too bad, actually. He would move to Italy. It's a nice place for him to get to go vacation and retire and get to play maybe a couple of games here and there. So honestly, I'm going to go ahead and accept this offer, except I'm going to try and get a little bit, just a little bit more cash. If we can get his value, awesome. And then maybe we need another replacement at center back. Six mil still is the deal. Johnny Evans to Italy. Mark Albrighton did sell, by the way, but in the end actually went to Hertha Berlin over any other team. So that's what's going on there. And Danny Ward sold to seller Nitana. So it is time now, after looking at our monthly scouting report, to sign that goalkeeper. Now my rule in the Youth Academy is pretty simple. If your value is over 500K, I'm gonna sign you up right away. So Jude Garner coming into the side, definitely into the Youth Academy right away here. Ed Wall, a player I'm gonna monitor a little bit further. He's got decent value. Looks like his stats and potential could be pretty decent as well. So again, that's kind of what you'll see. If there's any standout players, I'll update you. If not, this is going on in the background, but I'll show you the first month and kind of my thought process, just so you know. So obviously we made a lot of player sales over the month of July. Now that we're in August, we actually ended up with 122 million to spend because we sold a lot of players. We really did. So time to talk about the goalkeeper. There is a certain somebody who just won the World Cup and the coach of his team doesn't want to play him. As a matter of fact, he wants him sold as soon as possible. I am talking about Aston Villa and I am talking about Emiliano Martinez. This man was a hero at the World Cup. Is he cocky? Is he arrogant? Does he maybe do too much? That's not necessarily for me to decide. Personally, I love it. I think we need more of that in football. That is what people like to watch. Also, I think this guy is an amazing goalkeeper and made probably the best save of all time against France at the end of extra time. So Emiliano Martinez is the man that I want to bring into this side. He made his name at Arsenal through a very, very random series of events that led him to play for that team. Moved to Aston Villa where he made a name for himself and then got the spot in Argentina to even play at the World Cup in the first place. And now he's just literally going to be pawned off to anybody who wants him. This man should be playing for a top club. And I think that Leicester City are a little bit further along in their development as a, you know, English powerhouse than Aston Villa. So I think he belongs at a team maybe higher up than us, but he needs a job. He needs an employer. And a lot of the top teams have goalkeepers they already like. So you know what? The only other place I could see him going is like a potentially, maybe like a Bayern Munich or something like that. But I'm going to be bringing him across here. The January window isn't open yet. So he will be going somewhere, I think. But wherever that is, I'm still not sure. He didn't even play today in Aston Villa's game against, uh, I can't remember who their game was against, Liverpool. He didn't play against them. But yeah, I don't know what's going on with him, but I'm going to be trying to bring him across. He's also not very expensive, about 34 million or so. And let's try and get him in. Began proceedings at 30 mil. They counted with about 35. I think we'll end up getting to settle for a nice 32 million. Okay, so maybe not 32 million, 33 million for a World Cup winning gold keep, goalkeeper who had the golden glove, the best goalkeeper at the tournament. I'll take that. Emiliano Martinez is coming across. Probably going to want a pretty hefty contract, but you know what? After winning the World Cup, and coming to a team like this, I don't blame him. Three-year deal, sounds good to me, bro. No release clause, and it's up to me to give him a wage. Honestly, I probably shouldn't make him one of our highest paid players, but I'm gonna do it. 120K in your wage, half a million as a signing bonus. Hopefully that's enough for you to come to Leicester City. It sure is. Cue the cutscene. We've got a star player coming in. Emiliano Martinez makes his way into Leicester City. He's coming to the Midlands from, well, Birmingham. James Madison's here to welcome him. Everybody's here to welcome him. He's running on the treadmill, doing the usual, you know. And we've got our new number one, Emiliano Martinez. I do wonder what kind of price rating we'll get for a transfer like this. 33 million for a world-class, like World Cup winning goalkeeper. That's what I thought, an A. I would expect no less. That already adds so much to our back line. That breeds so much more confidence for me. By the way, I just put Castagna in here to have like the highest rated 11 possible. James Justin will honestly probably end up playing at left back. But um, yeah, now if you take a look, Johnny Evans, Walt Face, and Kagler Seyunchu are all tied on overall. But Seyunchu is just, besides defending, a lot better of a player than Johnny Evans. So already I think I'm going to go ahead and move Seyunchu into the side instead of Johnny Evans. 
and the captaincy will end up going to probably not Emiliano Martinez right away. I'll probably give it to Jamie Vardy. Not necessarily the kind of player who will lead on the pitch, but he will lead by example. Also dropping off in his rating, by the way. So we will hopefully get a good season or two. Well, season, really, from Jamie Vardy. And then it's up to Pats and Daka to carry that mantle. So, yeah. Transfers going well. Now it's time to, you know, reinvest. Bring in players. So, positions to figure out still. Right wing. Maybe left back. And also, we need a center back, maybe, for Johnny Evans or something like that. And then goalkeeper-wise, we've got Danny Iverson. He's young, 25, at least younger pretty tall and he can do the job for us when we need him to in the cups. Johnny Evans actually did get sold to Lazio. I don't know why I forgot about that, but he's gone. So actually we, we will need a center back. So comments down below. We need a right wing center back, maybe a left back. What do you want me to see? I mean, what do you want to see? I will talk about right wing options because that's the other big position I want to have players in for. But other than that, I'll leave it up to you guys. Wow. The spuds have come in with a huge offer for James Madison. Again, if we're not in Europe next season, this guy will be out of the club. It'll be like a rebuild inside of a rebuild inside of a rebuild of sorts. But that is a lot of money to turn down. So we better perform this season as a team and him as a player. Otherwise, we're going to be getting a big hefty sum for him next season. And I love James Madison. I don't want him leaving. Also now coming to my attention as I get ready to assemble the starting 11 for our first Premier League game of the season that we actually have no backups on the wings. So I think that that Youth Academy kid can actually get promoted right away and actually kind of play a role already we still will probably need a better starting right winger and maybe him and Perez can be like backup but yeah we have nobody desperate times here at Leicester City right now call for I guess kind of desperate measures he's a great looking player so I don't think it's really that big of an issue to have him here but Finley Marks getting promoted into the senior team and could potentially see minutes on the pitch today against the Spuds but with the players we have I think the kind of tactics we need to be rolling with are these. When the team makes a mistake, we can look to capitalize on, on it in terms of pressure. We don't really want to be a team that has the ball too much. I don't think we have the strength there. We have a lot of pace up front, therefore forward runs for chance creation, and we've got just a normal amount of width. Players in the box is a medium amount at five, and really it's going to be up to players like Jamie Vardy and Harvey Barnes to be getting in behind the defense. James Madison and Telemans to kind of help us unlock that, and the rest of the team really just kind of focused on defending and creating the opportunities in the first place for these players that are going to be our important ones right here. These four or five players are going to be massive. Hopefully we can bring in a right winger that can get involved with that as well. And I know the beginning of this episode probably went on for a very long time and you're all mad at me for not playing games. There will be one game in this episode for sure. The opener against Tottenham Hotspur, who just tried to pay 70 something million for James Madison, by the way. Kind of a rude move if you ask me. But let's get out there and play. The first game is at the King Power Stadium, so we'll get to see our home turf, which will look different in a few years' time, actually, because they're getting redone. But we're playing up against a team who has a lot of players that were at the World Cup and did very, very well. Another World Cup winner in Romero, runner-up in Lloris, Perisic, a finalist, I mean, a semi-finalist, Harry Kane, well, you know, and Hyung min Son. All of these players, very, very good. But I think we're better, so let's get out there. Start of the Premier League season for Leicester. I'll make the first half a little bit quicker because in real life, you know, it's January now. So we're in the second half of the season. We don't really want to redo the whole first half too much, right? So we'll get there pretty quickly, but I do want to play the opener. Leicester had a pretty bad start to their season or a pretty bad first half to their season compared to what expectations are. And really, I think just the expectations are a little too high for what the squad they have in real life. But we could probably do one better, especially if we get some more fresh faces like Emiliano Martinez into the team. We won't be, ho hopefully we won't be sitting 13th at the second half of the season like they are right now. And just like in my other s series that we've done, I will update you on kind of their performance in real life as there are updates. So, you know, Premier League restarted. They played up against Newcastle and they lost 3-1 or 3-0. I, I actually forget exactly. I don't think they scored. I think it was 3-0. Yeah, pretty embarrassing first day back when the team kind of has been needing results. Brendan Rodgers' job has been in question for a while now, like probably 10 fixtures or so, where people have been saying he should get sacked. And then he just kind of pulls out a string of runs and a string of form. And then we're kind of fine again. So, yeah, very back and forth for Leicester. Hopefully the tides will turn, especially with me here controlling the team. I'm using some cool sliders, by the way. They're the FIFA OS community sliders. So if you don't know what those are, basically slows down the game a lot. Sprint speed is set to like 
15, if that's any indication. And the game gets made just harder and a little bit more realistic in general. Nice cross from Ricardo Pereira. When I was doing my World Cup runs, I was doing 90 whole minutes of commentary, like full game, being played on the video. I don't know if I'm going to do that in these series, because it's going to make the videos really long. It'll probably be like an hour. And I just don't know if people are going to watch that long. It'll be great for like watch time and analytics and stuff. So you guys let me know what you'd like to see. Do you like the 90 minutes of commentary or do you want to see just more highlights and stuff? Today's game for the sake of time, because I did a lot of talking at the beginning, we'll just have highlights. We're going to have a hard time here, for sure. We will do our best. We'll try and break them down as best as we can with a couple of runs from players like Jamie Vardy. Right now he's doing it again. Jamie Vardy getting up to that. Nice ball up on, over the top of the defense. That's probably going to be the best way to break down this Tottenham back line. Wait for them to press up just a bit too high and get in behind. James Madison, Tielemans, great passers of the ball, can set us up. And Jamie Vardy from outside the box tries to beat Lloris, but he's equal to that. He's been making great saves all World Cup, so he's in good form in real life. And I guess in FIFA kind of carries over, but not from the corner. James Madison, the set piece delivery of a lifetime onto the noggin of Jamie Vardy. And we all know what kind of celebrations this guy does. He's crazy. That is a great, great way to score your first goal. I'm pretty sure in real life, Leicester have the least set piece goals scored in the Premier League this season, but we're off to a good start with already a corner goal for our opener at home. Jamie Vardy off to a flying start as well. I was kind of questioning how good he was going to be and how long he would last as our starting striker. And he is straight away showing me that I need to put my faith in him and trust that he can still do a job at his ripe age of 35. Finds a pass to James Madison. Back to Ricardo Pereira. This is a little bit messy. Oh, that buildup was definitely a bit crunchy. And Kagler Sayunchu doing well at the back. I'm going to try to do my best to get more defensive highlights in as well because when I do these highlight things, it's always just our attacks, never what we do well at the back. It's important to see what we do at the back, though. Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Estanya doing a job. He's been really, really good, actually, for Leicester, so that's why I'm playing him. Jamie Vardy over the top by Iose Perez, and the finish is just well over the bar. Too much on it. Harry Kane out wide, making the run inside. Wolt Face, who was signed in as a replacement for... I kind of forget who, I'm not going to lie. Who did they sell out of their back line to bring him in? I think they didn't, really. They just kind of brought him in. And he's been actually pretty good. Just... A little bit too young and not exactly what they needed. They needed somebody that could be a little older and experienced and a leader. Kind of like Johnny Evans. And they didn't do that. They kind of went the young route. Which seems to be working out okay for them. But inconsistency is going to be the biggest issue for them. Oh god. So is the open goal that we just left. Emmy Martinez. And just miscommunication at the back line. We got a new goalkeeper. So it's going to be expected. Harry Kane getting on the score sheet for Tottenham. That was a very, very messy passage of play though. That... Flick up from Harry Kane. Kagler Soyuncu like puts it down. Doesn't let Emiliano Martinez get on it. It just kind of bounces around. And Harry Kane gets himself on the score sheet. And everybody in Fantasy Premier League is loving life. No more clean sheet bonuses for Leicester defenders. <laughs> and a goal for Harry Kane, of course. Halftime. One all. To be expected against a side like Tottenham. They will always pop up with a random chance or two. Put it in the back of the net. And then just try and defend really well. But we've broken them down once. And we'll probably be able to do it again if we're, you know, continue playing well. I am noticing that Iose Perez on this right-hand side, really just not it at all. So, Marks, I forget his first name, I'll try and remember it later, is going to come on for his first game already at halftime. going to be bringing him on, and I'm going to be telling him to get in behind. He's a young player with a relatively low overall, but for a youth academy player, it's great. He's tall, we can use him almost as like a inside forward, second striker type of guy, target man type, but not exactly how I'm going to be using him, of course. Just how, what we have as an option. But he's got pace, and he is going to be a big help, I think. He's going to have lots of game time and opportunities to grow, and he's going to have to try and win those kinds of aerial battles with his height if he wants to be playing more games as well. That's that's going to be pretty important. And Didi doing his job, marking up, getting the ball for us, and starting play. Jamie Vardy not usually playing through balls, but he is right now. James Madison to Harvey Barnes, heavy touch. Ben Davies going to be playing it. Out the back for Tottenham here. Looking for an opportunity, but Harvey Barnes wins it back. James Madison sees the run of our Youth Academy player, and he whiffs it. Oh, man. It's okay. Give him more chances. I'm sure he'll get himself on the score sheet. It would be awesome to see him score in his first game as a Leicester player, though. Can you imagine that? Promoted out of the Youth Academy. The next big thing 
and scoring on your opening debut goal, opening debut match. I, you know, I'm having a hard time talking sometimes, and uh, that was an example of that. A lot of pressure from this forward line of ours. I like it. Didi trying to play that safely back, but he was marked. I did not know that. Vardy to Telemans. Telemans, the overlap from Ricardo Pereira. I like this. You've got a tall player in the box, or Jamie Vardy, or James Madison. Lots of bounces here. Falls for us. We need to slow the play down a bit. Wait for a good run or two. Ricardo Pereira to Marks or to Vardy. Vardy to James Madison. Takes a touch, takes a shot, and it's wide. Oh, man. We're taking way too many chances that are being wasted right now. Another change can hopefully freshen things up here. Pats and Daka is going to come on for Jamie Vardy. And I'm going to take off Telemans for Kiernan Dewsbury Hall. He's got like a little bit more pace and some fresh legs to help us out. I hope that he's going to be able to play a big role here. I'm also going to bring on James Justin for Castagna because he's got that bit more pace that could also help us out just a tiny bit, I think. Those are going to be all the subs I make because that's all I want to see happen sub-wise. But also just to, so you know, Dibu Martinez, which is his nickname, is going to be the captain for the rest of this game. Pats and Daka, potentially the future of that number nine role at Leicester City. He's got a very similar profile to Jamie Vardy. He's very fast, and he can be very lethal on the counterattack, which is, I mean, really what made Leicester so good a few seasons ago when they won this Premier League. Pats and Daka, one thing he's really bad at is passing the ball. I know that, so I'm going to have to be careful with that. Pats and Daka, taking a touch out of his feet. Not enough opportunity there for him. James Madison, space, takes the shot, chests it down. Takes another shot, and it's wide once again. At this point, it looks like we're going to have to maybe settle for this draw and hope that Ta uh, Tottenham don't get a chance to get themselves a winner. Would love to get at least something out of this opening game. A draw is totally fine with me. They're trying to shore up at the back. Eric Dyer coming on for Matt Doherty. He's going to be playing right back for the rest of this game, I guess. Oh, nice win that back. Marks. Potentially maybe one more probing ball in behind here. Can we find somebody with this? Don't think so. Yeah, I just don't think we have the quality in certain spots on the pitch still, like the right wing position. And that was ultimately the difference, right? Tottenham were not great going forward, but they got their chance and they took it. We created a lot, but we're lacking just that final touch from a few of our players a few of the times that they had an opportunity. Yeah, one look at the stats tells you everything you need to know. We had the possession, a lot, a lot of shots. Nine shots, 2.4 expected goals, more passes even. A lot of tackles won, so we're playing our style of football very well. We're getting up, we're making chances, we're even able to outpass a team like Tottenham, and we're very, very aggressive in the defense. That's the kind of stuff I want to see from us, but what I want to see more of is a little bit more clinicalness, clinicality. 44% shot accuracy is just not perfect, you know? I know this has been a long episode, but I just got a couple more things to share with you. One thing, and I'm going to leave it at this, I'm not going to accept this or deny this offer, PSV want to buy Ayose Perez. I just realized he's 29 years old. This guy could get sold and we could bring in maybe even two wingers. Somebody that could be like a starting player, somebody maybe a little bit lower rated that could work his way up alongside our youth academy player. So Ayose Perez, potentially up for sale. I forgot I put him on the transfer list just to kind of scope out offers. This could be a good move for us. One more thing to show you, our short list for the wings. So we need one or maybe even two more wingers. Pace is one of the most important stats to me. Nico Williams could be an option. Gonzalo Plata, I'm not going to say the names of all of these players, but I'll tell you the names of some of my most interesting options. Madweke, very, very highly rated in all of European football, and he's got a decent, not too bad release clause on him, 36.8 million, could be a great option. Doku, again, a very cheap release clause. His rating is definitely a lot lower than what I would necessarily like. I'm wanting more towards the 80 overall rating, but he's Falling off a bit in terms of his prospect status, but the pace is just massive, and his dribbling could be great, and he could definitely be a good player for us. Marcus Edwards, but these are my main two right here. Kvica Kvaratskhelia from Napoli, right? He is taking the entire world of football by storm, or at least he did in the first half of the season, and we all kind of forgot about the guy, but Kvaratskhelia is insane. Five-star weak foot, four-star skills. This dude is banging goals for fun right now at Napoli. He's got pace. He has got good dribbling. He is good at scoring goals. He prefers to play on the left, but I'm sure if we brought him across, he could make waves on the right wing here at Leicester. This could be a great move for him. Despite losing Champions League football, he comes to the Premier League and hopefully gets it once again. And another one that I'm very, very interested in personally because I'm American is Christian Pulisic. 
He had a very good World Cup with the US, despite what a lot of people think. He got kicked in the balls and he scored a great goal. <laughs> but I think he could be good for us at Leicester, even though he's pretty highly rated and he would cost us a pretty good chunk of change because he can play on the right. He likes to play on the right. He's got pace. He's got a very high overall. I think this could be a great option. Jaden Sancho, I just kind of threw in there as a little bit of an interesting one right now. He's not playing for Man United. He's actually nowhere near the squad. He went to the Netherlands to like retrain his fitness and figure out why he is doing what he's doing. Not a pacey player, but he played on the right at Dortmund and he was incredible at like winning 1v1 dribbling duels and he's got five star skills. Different kind of player than what I usually like on the wings. I definitely want to use him at some point in FIFA this year. Maybe not the right team for it right now, but you guys let me know. This is a very big short list, but you know, help me at least narrow it down to a couple of options and we will sign one or maybe two of these players in the next episode. Like if we get Pulisic, we could easily also sign Jeremy Doku and kind of rotate him and our youth academy kid, Hill, I still don't remember his first name, on either side, you know, the left and the right, and they can get plenty of game time because our wingers on this team are gonna be up and down all game long, defending, going forward, using their pace. So we will need to be rotating and subbing a lot. So yeah, this is episode one of the rest Lester career mode wrapped up. I've been recording for well over an hour. If you guys enjoyed this, please be sure to leave that support down below. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here so you don't miss episode two and all the rest. And I told you guys like a 300 things to let me know in the comments so you guys know what to do. I will see you maybe not tomorrow, but in a couple of days for the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day and peace.